The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. American. Lucky Strike and Lucky Strike alone offers you important evidence gathered in the tobacco country by the world-famous Crosley Pole. This evidence reveals the smoking preference of auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, the men who really know tobacco. Here's what the Crosley Pole found. For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike First choice. Lucky Strike, first choice over any other brand. These experts know their business. Their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike, we believe, has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Luckies and to the real, deep-down smoking enjoyment you may expect from fine tobacco. And when these veteran tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice for their own personal smoking enjoyment, then you know... L-S-M-F-T... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, independent tobacco experts, again, name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. Trying it again from Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. (laughs) And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, for two consecutive weeks, we have lost part of our show. Last week, we not only lost the ending, but also the beginning. (laughs) However, we still have the pickle in the middle, and here he is, Jack Benny! Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you don't have to make jokes about what happened. You know, radio is our bread and butter. You know, if I lose my job, you lose your stomach. It's a very serious thing We lost the finish of the show two weeks ago Lost the finish again last week Well, if you're running long this week Fred Allen said he'd be very happy to give you time on his program Fred offered to give me time to finish my program? Yeah, he said he'd do anything to hear the end of Benny (laughs) Oh, well He's so homely, he has to be clever. Jack, why do you always keep saying that? After all, Fred isn't so ugly. (laughs) He isn't, eh? Alan makes the hunchback of Notre Dame look like the man of distinction. (laughs) (laughs) And he's not only homely, Don, he's so cheap. Oh, wait a minute, Jack. Don't say that Alan is cheap. He's a good sport, and you know it. Oh, he is, eh? Remember the time we were in New York and you and I had lunch with him? Yeah. Well, who picked up the check? I did. You're darn right. Alan just sat there, didn't move a muscle. Say, so he's got a lot of nerve making jokes about my being cut off the air. It's a very serious thing. I don't think it's so serious, Mr. Benny. What? My mother was listening to the radio show Sunday, and she didn't even know that you lost the end of the program. Your mother? That's peculiar. Oh, no, it isn't. When I get through singing, she shuts it off anyway. Oh, she does, eh? Well, I got a good mind to move your song down near the end, so she'll have to listen to my whole program. That'll teach her. (laughs) You said it. Jack, I don't know why you're making such a fuss. So you lost the tail end of your program. Does it make any difference? Does it make any difference? Mary, we were doing a sketch. People were interested. Now they'll never know what happened. I know just what you mean, Mr. Benny. I was listening to a daytime program the other day, and the announcer said, tune in tomorrow and hear another chapter of John's Other. And then the radio went off. <laughs> now, now people will never know what John has that he has another of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll never know. I've been racking my brains all day. It could be John's other house or John's other bicycle. Dennis. Maybe it's John's other head. Dennis, forget it, will you? You're not only taking up time, I don't want to be cut off the air again. Well, I don't blame you, Jack. You know, last week, Edgar Bergen lost his whole program. Mary, Bergen lost his whole program? Yeah, and his sponsors were so upset that Chase and Sanborn started drinking Sanka. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> oh, Mary, what did you say they were drinking? Sanka. You're welcome. 
Mary, there isn't a court in the country that will convict you. <laughs> now, let's get on with the program. Maybe it was John's other toothbrush. Quiet, will you, Danny? <laughs> you know, Mary, I just thought of something. You know, maybe... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, may, maybe my programs have been cut off the air because I'm too easygoing. I'm going to step in the control room and talk to Mr. Foster, the engineer. I'll tell him a thing or two. Now, Jack, control yourself. If you feel that you're losing your temper, count up to ten dollars. I will. I will. <laughs> oh, Mr. Foster, I'd like to talk to you a minute about why I was cut off the air last week. Okay, Mr. Benny, but watch those there wires, there, please. <laughs> Say, you do have a lot of wires in here, aren't you? Well, each wire is put in here for a definite purpose. Now, on this wire, we have the transformer. On this wire, we have the oscillator. And on this wire, we have the transmitter. I see. Well, what are those things on that wire up there? Clothespins. I just washed my socks. <laughs> Mr. Foster, I'm here on business. Now, what's the idea of trying to be so funny? I've got the wires open and my wife is listening in. What? Hello, Tilly. Put your mother back in the garage. I'm sleeping home tonight. <laughs> now, cut that out. I'll talk to you later. Everybody has to be a comedian. Oh, well, I know what I'll do. I'll call Niles Trammell, the president of NBC. Mary, give me that phone, will you? Here you are. Maybe it was John's other yo-yo. <laughs> oh, quiet. I'm trying to use the phone. Hello, operator. Get me the National Yo-Yo Company. I mean, the National Broadcasting Company in Hollywood. Yes, I'll wait. Hello, National Broadcasting Company. Yes. Yes, sir, I'll try to get him right away. Say, Mabel, it's Mr. Benny calling from Palm Springs. Gee, I wonder what Kiss of Death wants now. <laughs> Well, they cut him off the air last week, and oh boy, is he mad. You know, he's got a terrible temper. He has? I'll say. One Sunday, Phil Harris didn't show up for a rehearsal, and Mr. Benny got so mad, he blew his top. Really? Yeah, it took us an hour to find it. <laughs> oh, I remember that time. That's the maddest Jack has been in all his 39 years. Do you really believe he's only 39? Well, I did until one time he took me to the museum. The museum? Yeah. We were looking at the skeleton of dinosaur, and Mr. Benny was the only one who knew the hip bone was in the wrong place. <laughs> Gee, what a memory. But you know, I kind of envy him. He's been spending so much time lately in Palm Springs. Ah, Palm Springs. <laughs> So what's the matter with Palm Springs? I like it there. That's where I first met Jack Benny. It was in a little place called La Hacienda Sol de la Vista de la Carmelita Cristo. <laughs> la Hacienda Sol de la Vista de la Carmelita Cristo? Yeah, that's Spanish for the season is only five months long, but don't worry, we charge you for 12. <laughs> Operator, operator, operator. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but Mr. Trammell doesn't answer. All right, I'll call him later. Niles Trammell isn't in. Come on, Dennis, let's have your song. Okay. Hold it. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. I'll take it. Here's a tip for you, boy. Oh, goody, a nickel. Now they can open the cove again. <laughs> Go be nice to people. <laughs> Here, Mary, read the telegram. Okay. Uh-oh. What's the matter? It says, um, if you don't return my Oscar within 48 hours, I will not only take legal steps, but I will drag your name through the mud and expose you to the public as a blackguard, a phony, and an unmitigated fraud. Signed, Ronald Coleman. P.S. Benita sends her love to Mary. <laughs> Gee. Isn't that sweet? Yeah. 
You know, Mary, I'm really in a spot. I never should have borrowed that Oscar. What am I going to do? Well, why don't you tell him the truth, Jack? Yeah, why don't you tell Ronnie that you were held up and it was stolen? No, no, I can't. There must be something else I can do. I've got it. What? It's John's other cuspidor. <laughs> Dennis, stop being silly. Now, come on, let's have your song, John's Other Cuspidor. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. The things that big kids can think of. I don't know. Now is the hour sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. So now, ladies and gentlemen, because of what happened last Sunday, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to present another chapter of last week's mystery melodrama entitled <laughs> Murder at the Racket Club. <laughs> or, he asked her for a little wine, so she gave him both barrels. <laughs> In this new version, you will hear a new story... New characters, new jokes, and with luck, an ending. <laughs> Set the scene, Don. Okay. Our scene opens at the Palm Springs police station. Captain O'Benny is sitting in his chair with his feet up in the air. Somebody stole his desk. <laughs> Curtain, music! Climb down from my knees, sonny boy You're already 23, sonny boy I've no way of knowing Only that you're growing <laughs> Oh, sonny boy There's the phone, Chief Thank you, O'Day That kid's a great detective He knew it was the phone right away I'll take it. Hello, Palm Springs Police Station and mud baths. <laughs> we make you come clean. What's that, madam? You lost your cocker spaniel? Don't worry, we'll find him for you. What? Be sure to return the leash? Oh, your husband's on the other end. <laughs> Have you a description? The one with the cold nose is your husband. All right, goodbye. We got the silliest request here of any police station. Here's the phone, Chief. I knew it couldn't last. Come in. Morning, Chief. Good morning, Sergeant O'Wilson. Hey, wait a minute. This place is for customers. Did you sneak in here and take a mud bath? Not me, Chief. I haven't been near the mud bath. Don't lie to me. There's a gopher peeking out of your ear. <laughs> now, look. A woman lost her dog, and I want you and O'Day... Is that the phone? I think so. There's nobody at the door. <laughs> no. I'll take it. Hello, Palm Springs Police Station and mud baths. Captain O'Benny speaking. What's that? What? Murder at the Racket Club? Gee, this is getting monotonous. <laughs> Quiet. Yes? Yeah, okay, we'll be right over. 
What's up, Chief? The well-known playboy, Kerry Carew, has been murdered. Oh, Wilson, get the police car. Yes, sir. We better take along the strong arm squad. O'Shaughnessy, O'Mallory, O'Flannery, O'Promise Me. Are you ready, boys? <laughs> now, come on, fellas. And I'm going to find the murderer of Kerry Carew, or my name ain't... Calling all cars, calling all cars, attention police officers. Before going out on a criminal investigation, first load your gun and then take one of our baths. Why be half sake? <laughs> There must be something else on this radio. And so this concludes another chapter of that very popular daytime serial, John's Other Cuspidor. <laughs> Gee, the kid was right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have one of our cuspidors, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Could be. Come on, Sarge, step on the gas. L-S-M-T, L-S-M-T, Boone and Speedy Rick say quality of product is essential to success. Hey! Okay, men, here we are. Are you sure this is the place, Chief? Certainly. See that sign there? Racket Club. $30 a day, European plan. $40 a day, American plan. $2 million a day, Marshall plan. <laughs> hmm. How can Herbert Marshall afford it? Let's go in, men. Open up! Open up, it's the police! Yes? I'm Captain O'Benny of the Palm Springs Police Department. I'm Charlie Farrell, star of Seventh Heaven. I know, I know. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Farrell. This is the second time in a week that a murder has been committed at the racket club. Why does it always happen here? Because people won't be found dead in any other place. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Farrell, you may not be a comedian, but you sure know how to plug that joint. Stop with the wisecracks. Who are some of the people who are staying here? Well, there's Lana Turner, Tyrone Power, Betty Grable, Gary Cooper, Irene Dunn, and... Who? Uh, Irene Dunn. That's dead. Remember last week? <laughs> Watch it. You promised us new jokes. That one slipped in. Now, look, Mr. Farrell, we're going... Oh, don't in... be so formal. You don't have to call me Mr. Farrell. Okay, Charlie. No, no, that's too informal. What do you want me to call you? Star of Star Seventh, Seventh Heaven. Star of Seventh Heaven. <laughs> Now, we're going inside and investigate this murder. Come on, men. Follow me. Let us follow Captain Benny. He's got dough, but don't spend any. Let us follow Captain Benny, for he is essential to our eating every day. Hey! Well, here we are in the lobby, men. Mr. Farrell, where's the body? We moved it out by the swimming pool. By the swimming pool? Well, just because he's dead is no reason why he shouldn't get a tan. <laughs> Come on, man, we're going out of the swimming pool and see the body. Follow me. LSMT, LSMT, people at the racket club all know how much a suntan is essential to success. Hey! Here we are at the pool, man. Now let's find Carrie Carew's body. Hello, Chiefy. Hold it, man, I found a better one. <laughs> What's your name, miss? Well, last week I was Mitzi LaRue, but yesterday I married Carrie Carew and became Mitzi LaRue Carew. <laughs> Mitzi LaRue Carew? That's kind of not new, isn't it? Not anymore. Half hour ago, somebody slew Carew, and I'm back to LaRue. Good for you. <laughs> now, wait a minute. I think you're the one that did it. You got a smoking gun in your hand. Oh, that doesn't mean anything. Why not? This gun's been smoking for nigh on to 20 years. <laughs> oh, it has, eh? You ought to arrest her, Captain. That's her gun, and Carrie Carew was shot with it. But I didn't do it. This morning, I filled my gun with bullets and left it in my room, went out for a walk. A likely story. <laughs> you mean to say that after putting bullets in it, you walked out and left the gun in the room all by itself? Yeah, it was lonely but loaded. <laughs> well, we'll go over and examine the body because... <laughs> What's that, another murder? No, one of the guests just got his bill. <laughs> now, Miss LaRue, 
I want to get all the details regarding the murder of your husband, Kerry Carew. He may have been poisoned before he was shot. What did he have for dinner? He had a filet mignon. A steak, eh? How was the steak cooked? It was well did. You're not going to catch me. <laughs> Well, now, look, sister, I'm holding you for the murder because hey, I chief, don't... chief, chief. Yeah, what is it, O'Day? I was out searching the grounds. I saw a man walking along with a dog, so I questioned him. Did he have an alibi? No, a cocker spaniel. Mm. I had that line, but I wouldn't touch it. <laughs> you keep out of this, Farrell. Now, O'Day, tell me about this man you saw. Can you describe him? Yeah, he was dressed like a cowboy. Was he a real cowboy or a dude? That's did. <laughs> Never mind! <laughs> Now, look. Oh, Chief, Chief. What is it, O. Wilson? I couldn't find the man or the dog, but here's the leash. The leash? I'm not a leash. I'm Frank Sinatra. And put me down. <laughs> Hello, Frank. Now, this is Sinatra. What are you doing here at the racket club? I thought you were staying at the El Irisado. I am. I was over here taking, I was over there taking a sun bath, and I guess it's windier than I thought. One line, he nearly killed the whole thing. Well, I guess I blew that, huh? <laughs> well, we'll be off the air again. <laughs> now listen, Sinatra. Listen, Sinatra, what do you know about the murder of Ketty Kadu? Ketty Kahu? Kadu. <laughs> Well, I don't know anything about it. I'm just waiting around till another wind comes up. <laughs> well, look, Sinatra, everyone here at the club is under suspicion, so I'll have to hold you till we can find... <laughs> hmm. Poor Frankie thinks he's going back to the El Rosado. That was a five o'clock breeze for Banning. <laughs> oh, well, he can get off at Cabazon, take the local Zephyr back. <laughs> well, come on, man. Let's go in the lobby and start grilling the suspect. Follow me. L S M T, L S M T. Everyone but Frank Sinatra is so round and firm and very, very fully packed. Hey! Now, just a minute, fellas. There's a very suspicious-looking man over there. Hey, you! Now, don't move. I want to question you. Now, what's your name? Sam Goldwyn. Samuel Goldwyn, yeah? Hey, wait a minute. Are you that famous, talented, colossal, inimitable genius of the motion picture industry? That's what it says on my driver's license. <laughs> Never mind the wisecracks. This is murder. I know. I've been listening to it. <laughs> I don't mean that. Now, tell me, Mr. Goldwyn, what were you doing... <laughs> What are... <laughs> What were you doing when the shot was fired? I was th <laughs> Stop laughing or we won't get off the air right now. I <laughs> What were you doing when the shot was fired? I was standing here hating myself for not producing go with the wind. <laughs> I said. <laughs> now listen. You know who was the star of Seventh Heaven, don't you? Certainly. It's marked on every guest towel. Uh, now, Mr. Goldwyn, I'd like to talk to you alone. Would you mind stepping into the other room? Not at all. Now, Mr. Goldwyn, I have a confession to make. I'm not really a police captain. I'm Jack Benny. Well, then we're reading. What? I'm not really a genius, I'm just colossal. <laughs> oh, good, good. Now, Mr. Goldwyn, what I want to talk to you about is this. Look, as you probably know, I borrowed Ronald Coleman's Oscar and lost it, and I thought maybe you could lend me one. Now, you did win one last year for the best years of our lives, didn't you? Huh? I won nine. You won nine Oscars? Now hmm? I... Now that I think of it, I am a genius. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That picture also won the Academy Award in England, didn't it? Cheerio, yip, yip. <laughs> now, Mr. Goldwyn. <laughs> now, Mr. Goldwyn, I thought that maybe, as a personal favor to me, you'd just lend me one of your Oscars. Huh? But, Jack, 
Well, did you win an Oscar for the home blows at midnight? No, but I was close. They hit me over the head with it. <laughs> now, Mr. Goldman, please lend me one of your Oscars. When will you return it? When I'm done with it. When I'm... That's did. Now I'll never loan it to you. I thought you'd never get to that line either. Fine enough. All right, then. I'm... If that's the case, I might as well finish our mystery. <laughs> All right, men, line up the suspects. And I'll find the murder of Kitty Kadu. Or my name ain't... What's that? Somebody threw a rock through the window. Hey, look, Chief, there's a note on it. Give me that. Let me read it. I haven't had a line in the whole play. <laughs> You're the body. Lie down. I said you're dead, lie down. Darn this climate. <laughs> now, where's the note? It may be something important. Hmm, it is important. It's from the National Broadcasting Company. What does it say, Chief? It says, talk faster, you'll be cut off the air again. <laughs> P.S. Niall Strammel sends his love to Mary. <laughs> well, we better hurry up. Hey, you over there, you look suspicious. Now, what have you got to say about the murder and talk fast? <laughs> I thought so, a full confession. All right, men, you know your duty, get going. Mud baths, mud baths, get your mud baths at the Palm Springs Police Station. Don't be mud baths, get, mud bad, get mud your mud baths at the Palm Springs Police Station. Get your mud baths. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Red Cross finds it necessary to continue its fundraising campaign to help our hospitalized veterans, to say nothing of its many other services to our communities. Please give generously to your local Red Cross chapter. It needs more money than ever before. Thank you. <laughs> Jack, we'll be back in just a minute. But first, here's Basil Risedale. Independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice over any other brand. The famous Crosley poll has just completed an impartial survey in 11 southern tobacco states. This poll, taken among tobacco experts, reveals the smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco. Yes? For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike, first choice. Lucky Strike... First choice over any other brand. These are the experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. And we believe their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Luckies. You've heard the poll results. Now listen to what Mr. Charles Belvin, veteran tobacco buyer from Durham, North Carolina, recently said. Season after season, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy ripe, mild tobacco. I've smoked Lucky's 16 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T! L-S-M-F-T! Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure to hear the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show on Sundays and a day in the life of Dennis Day on Wednesdays. Next Sunday... Our guest star will be Dorothy Kirsten of the, Melod of the Metropolitan Grand Opera. I want to thank Samuel Goldwyn for appearing here tonight through the courtesy of Samuel Goldwyn. <laughs> Frank Sinatra can be heard every Saturday night on the Lucky Strike hit parade and can be seen on the screen in that RKO picture, Miracle of the Bells. Charlie Farrell, star of Seventh Heaven, can currently be seen behind the cash register at the racket club. <laughs> Incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, Seventh Heaven was produced by 19th Century Fox. <laughs> and next week, next week, we will be back oh, Mr. In... Benny! Mr. Benny! Jack, the engineer wants you. Oh. Oh, what is it, Mr. Foster? I've got terrible news for you. Oh, my goodness. Were we cut off the air again? No, they heard every word. <laughs> How do you like that? If it's not one thing, it's another. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.